Jeremy and I, we put out a zine together. I don't have a belt on. Uh, and uh, uh, his middle name is Randall. Uh, he's about this tall. Dave, that was awesome. <laughs> that was scary. Oh god. How you guys doing? Well! You're doing well. There we go. The vernacular is correct there. Uh, this is actually the first time I've done comedy since I hit the one year mark. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I got some stuff to tell you guys about. Oh. Okay. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and uh, I realized that uh, Alzheimer's is uh, nature's roofie. <laughs> yeah. What? Say what? Okay. Um, my uh, uncle just got a pool. And it's really weird how much I think about my aunt and uncle having sex in it. <laughs> like how, that's the thing about a lot, it's kind of weird. Um, Chinese orphans. Chinese orphans. They have it a lot worse than you think. Um, let me break this down. Say you're a Chinese orphan, you get adopted, you end up being um, Angelina Jolie's son, and then when you hit puberty, and you start jerking off, it's like really weird to jerk off to your mom. <laughs> so it's like two, two, two things. I don't, I don't trust myself sexually around elementary schools. Alright, if, if a hobo won the lottery, do you think he would go on a shopping spree for boxes at UPS, or would he invest in a subprime mortgage? Thank you, thank you. Uh, I was so hungry today that I could literally eat my own cock. Especially if it was grilled. Um, if you could fit your own dick in your mouth, uh, you either have genetically altered rib cages or a really big wee wee. Um, I took a break today from burning the Koran. Uh, to go to Best Buy because I ran out of CDRs. <laughs> Alright, so, um, sorry, I'm sorry, we're cool, man, we're cool, dude, I won't, I swear, I swear, I swear to Allah, <laughs> no, no, not yet, don't peep up yet, alright, got another page of material. <laughs> Alright, so um, some of you might know that I had a thing with a 30 year old a couple weekends ago. Yeah! Um, she, yeah, we just made out. <laughs> but uh, she has a kid, and um, I wrote a play, this is a one man play, uh, about my experience, or like a proposed experience with her. Um, it's called uh, Sugar Mama. <laughs> Yo, girl, I want to be inside you. I want to be a baby. I want to get inside your vaginal linings. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it hasn't been workshopped yet. Uh, this is a serious matter. 
Uh, I have a lump in my cheek right here. It's freaking me out. And it's, I'm, God, I'm fucking serious. <laughs> and uh, my friend said it was herpes, which is clearly not true, because, well, I sh oh shit, the third year, I forgot. <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure it's cancer, so I made a list of a couple of things I want to do before I die. Uh, number one, I want to nair my ex-girlfriend's two cats. <laughs> And um, I also want to go to the state fair and not have my dad forget me accidentally for the third time. <laughs> um, so, that's that. That's that. I'm waiting till jail to find out um, what I feel about religion. So, I said that wrong. <laughs> Um, I was on I was on Craigslist the other day looking for a wet nurse, <laughs> and uh, I came across a really good deal on a Razor scooter. A green, a green one. So, this thing used to be like a hundred dollars. weekend um, and uh, the lines for the men's room were really long and uh, I th for the urinals and I thought it would be a good idea to yell out um, hey guys whip it out before you get up to the stall <laughs> <laughs> just a good idea <laughs> um, I, wrote a, um, I wrote a note or like a, a fan letter to Bob Dylan uh, but I addressed it to Bob Zimmerman uh, just to use his his birth name. And uh, when he was on vacation in Cancun, uh, but the U.S. government intercepted it, and uh, it started World War One. <laughs> Come on, man. You know Tuskegee Airmen. That's World War Two. You know what's up. <laughs> She was a general, and I was like, I was like, bitch, give me nuclear warhead now. Does anybody own a Saturn Ion? No. I'm totally, my SUV's totally trapped. Give it up for that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Please help him. <laughs> Give it up for your last comedian. Yeah. Not yeah. I mean, the comedian who just performed. There's more comedians to go. And I, uh, I don't know, the last comedian was... Reeves. John Reeves. What was his name? John Reeves. John Reeves! John Reeves! Oh, hey, remember that from UHF? La, 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 la. But seriously, who loves comedy? I'm pretty sure all the rest of the comedians are going to be this height. And so, I would like to welcome the next comedian. Hey everyone. 
Hey. Hey. This is fucking weird. All right, all right. Ah, can't be damn. I'm Jason, I'm tall, I had to get off my fucking knees. It's not a Friday and I don't need to make ten dollars. <laughs> Alright, let's start this shit. Uh, fuck, uh, is the oil spill still going on? Is it? Is it? No. Is it over? No! How the fuck did that start? Did they cast the Jersey Shore go swimming? <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know, that fucking show sucks. TV fucking sucks in general these days. Like, you know, we got sports now. Like we got, it's a good time here to watch sports. We got football, as you can see. We got baseball. We got USA basketball, right? And like while I'm watching the sports, you all know the baseball analogies, right? Like you know, first base, got the second base, got the third base, fucked. You know what I mean? You know the analogies, right? So that's cool for baseball. But like I'm watching basketball, and I can't tell if they're talking about basketball or fucking. You know what I mean? Like I'm watching the game and I'm smoking a joint and. Uh, I hear this, it's like, penetrates the middle, goes down low, good ball movement, finds the seam at the charity stripe, wisely pulls it out. So I'm watching basketball, and I switch, and I'm watching football, and it's the same shit. It's like, what the fuck are they talking about? It's like, he rolls out, smacks the tight end, Smash Mouth the middle. It's going the other way. Spikes it easily in the end zone. Going the other way was a doggy style reference. Uh, so I switch that channel, right, and I see a commercial. And it's a fucking Extends commercial. Y'all seen that shit? Jimmy Johnson is a spokesman for Extends. Which makes sense because he's named after two dicks. Right? So what's next? Dick Triple gonna be like a spokesman for like every STD? He's a race car driver. <laughs> you didn't know. Oh man. So I saw the Extends commercial, so I got kind of horny and I got tired of watching TV, so I went out to the club, right? To try to meet a girl, maybe, possibly. And like, I'm trying to dance with these girls, and dancing is non existent these days, right? Dancing today is like dry humping, right? I know what dry humping is. I went to eighth grade. <laughs> right? I know what that shit is, right? So, like, I go in the club and it's like, what the fuck? It's, this isn't dancing. Like, they're changing the names of dances now to catch up with the times, right? Like, the tango, now it's the bang ho. Like, the fox trot, now it's the cock spot. Or the wet spot. Depending if you're in Shaco Bottom or the fan. <laughs> The electric slide, now it's the symmetric ride. You know? The Macarena is still the same, but now you actually have penetration involved. Yeah. I got crazy thoughts. Who here, uh, another question for you. Audience participation time. Who here likes having sex? Woo! Ooh, nice boo. Just the ladies who likes having sex. Just the ladies? I don't even have a joke. I just want to see who you are when I get off stage. That's all. Now I got a bone to pick with some of you ladies, man. All right. Some of y'all forget to take your birth control. How the hell do you forget to take your birth control? If they made birth control for guys, we'd wear it around our neck like a candy necklace and eat it. Monday, Tuesday, we'll never forget, man. So ladies, take your birth control, please. And guys, wear condoms. Sometimes. <laughs> if you're in the mood, you know what I mean? If you're in the mood. But like, there's some guys in this world who are scared to buy condoms, man. Like, I was walking in the Rite Aid a few weeks ago, and there's a young guy outside, right? And he's like, but I don't want to go inside and buy condoms. It's embarrassing. The only thing embarrassing is he's fucking whining, man. Put me in Rite Aid, trying to buy some condoms. Magnums, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm white when we're all black when the lights go out, right? <laughs> Put me in writing. Try to buy some condoms. I tell everybody in sight. I am having sex tonight. Hey you. Hey you with the case of beer at Maxim Magazine. You bump it up at least tonight? Because I am. I'm running around giving high fives to the pharmacist, chest bumps to the cashier. I'm like Michael Jordan after a 3 I'm on top of a fucking counter spraying champagne everywhere saying I'm going to do it again next year. <laughs> right? And some guys don't like buying their women tampons. 
I love buying my girlfriend tampons. You know why? It means she's not pregnant. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Put me in Rite Aid trying to buy some tampons. I told everybody in sight. The girl I fucked last night with the condoms I bought here is not pregnant. <laughs> hey, you in the case of beer and diapers. You expecting? Because I'm not. <laughs> I'm running around giving high fives with a pharmacist's chest, bumps to the cashier. I'm like Dracula after a 3 I'm on top of a fucking counter spraying blood everywhere saying my girl's going to do it again next month. <laughs> Man. Uh, I got a uh, one minute or so left. Uh, so, uh, anybody, anybody here have kids? Babies? No? I don't either. I don't think I have any. But, anybody, anybody got dogs? Up in, in here? Dogs? Kids, dogs? You know what? I, a lot of my friends got dogs. I'm old. I'm like 56. I just got Botox and shit. I'm old. Alright? But, you know the people like, they, owning a kid or having a kid is just like having a dog. No, it's not. That's fucking ridiculous, man. It's two different things, right? You know how hard it is to get a kid to pee outside? It's fucking hard, man. You know what I mean? Like, like if if you buy a dog one toy, he's happy for his whole life. But you gotta buy a kid a toy every fucking day, right? You know? If a if a kid pukes on the ground, you gotta clean it up. If a dog pukes on the ground, he cleans it up. Big difference. Right? If a dog runs away, he's probably coming back. If a kid runs away, he might come back, but you don't really give a fuck. I don't know. But uh, I'll close with this. I do have I do have two dogs, right? And and my dogs try to talk to me. Like they make noises that sound like words and shit. I got a German Shepherd, right? And I'll they come home and she'll be like, Hello. Like, what the fuck? What's up? Say, like, what's up? Like, what's up? So I came home last night drunk as shit at four in the morning, right? And my daughter's had me dead in my face. And she said, where were you? I'm like, where was I? Guys, isn't that just like a bitch? <laughs> I'm Jason Klingman. Thank you, Kevin. Somebody gave me the book, 
and I read it in an entire day, and then I went out and bought all the other books, and now I've got the Twilighter and the Team Jacob shirt, and I was like, you know what, I've seen this before. I've seen this, and it's on an after school special for crack. You're trying to get me addicted to something that I don't want to be addicted to, and Twilight is not going to work for me. I'd rather smoke crack, basically. But, um, actually, <laughs> I'm too busy to read the Twilight books because I'm actually having, like, for real sex instead of all that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, actually, I get bored with regular sex, you know, like a little kink to it. So, sometimes. When I'm done and then we're fooling around in bed afterwards, I like to just take his balls and play with them a little bit and act like they're Yoda. Like, don't go with him, you must. <laughs> or if it's a black dude, if it's a black dude, you can actually take the head, you guys should totally try this, and take it a little bit and just go, no, I am your father. Because, you know, Darth Vader's been known to choke people before, so that works with black cops. But, um, so you can't do that with a white cop. Because that's basically just playing with a stormtrooper at that point. And all they want to do is, like, stop them, blast them, stop that ship, blast them. Evidently, the white cops just going to blast them and not actually do anything really useful. But, no. Um, when I'm not having tons of sex with Star Wars references, um, <laughs> I like nerds, what can I say? They find it amusing. Um, I actually do like Shark Week. Thank you everybody for spoiling that. That is my second favorite week. And um, they've actually slowed it down to the point that there's 2,000 frames per second for this. And you can actually see the sharks breach out of the water when they tow these little decoys behind the, <laughs> the boat in South Africa. You can see all of the water cascading. You can see the shark actually spit the decoy out of their mouth. And look at the guys in the boat like, you fucking assholes. I totally had to work for that fucking rubber. What the fuck? And then they go back into the water. It's very graceful, very powerful moment. <laughs> but everything, I figure they're shooting everything in high definition, 2,000 frames per second, because it's nothing but potheads watching Shark Week, basically. <laughs> and we want to make sure that we get all the little nuances and that our bag was totally worth the purchase for that week. But no, Shark Week is freaking awesome, and I've actually um, been on a great white shark dive in San Francisco. Yeah, it was actually pretty amazing. But um, on the flight out there, it's this huge long flight, and it didn't happen to be a full flight. So when I got on board, you know, they, um, the flight attendant gentleman looked me up and down. He's like, would you like to go into the emergency exit aisle? And I was like, hell yeah, that's like the poor man's first class. A long trip like that, you get more leg room, like all this stuff. And I was like, you know, I get a lot of upgrades and stuff like that, you know, because it's the girls or whatever. But I was like super stoked about it. So he starts doing the safety announcement, and he comes down and he's like, now are you going to be able to help us in case of an emergency? You know, you need to assist the crew, and we'll let you know if we need you for anything. And I'm like super stoked about being, you know, in this important little like responsibility and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And he's doing the safety announcements. And we're on Southwest. And he's like, you know, please pull your trays up to the upright position. Please make sure that your seatbelts are locked and, you know, don't get up. And if there's a change in cabin pressure, please put the mask on you first. And then he gets to the part where. He says, and in case of an accidental water landing, the woman over 14B can be used as a personal flotation device. <laughs> That's hey! That's fucked up! I should have asked what my responsibilities were before I said yes to this. That's unacceptable. I just don't know if I want all that responsibility. <laughs> but it's okay. The guy explained to me later that Southwest actually encourages um, the people doing the safety announcements that they can do it in a weird, quirky way to get people involved. So on the return trip back from San Francisco, we actually had the woman who did her safety announcements through interpreted dance. So it made it all better. And that's actually all of my new stuff. So thank you for playing along. You guys have a great night.